my lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to RimWorld and our Ice Sheet Survival Challenge with our solitary colonist here, Cobra. So we start this episode and it's the middle of the night and Cobra is wide awake unfortunately, so that's going to probably havoc on his old sleep routine there. But such as it is. So previously in the last episode we'd start to work on some sculptures for our base both of which are adding to our room's overall beauty rating, which is helping keep Cobra in a decent enough mood while he does remain indoors in his little shed stroke base. It's nothing too fancy at the moment, so don't want to give it too grand of a title, but it's serving a purpose for us. We're continuing on with some research, as we can see, and we're about halfway through the research of pottery at the moment. Now, as I touched upon previously, the reason we're going for texts such as pottery rather than headlining for something a little more quote-unquote useful, such as electricity, is because we are classed as a Neolithic tribal era, and anything above that tech level is prohibitively expensive for us to even attempt to research. So, essentially, we need to get a majority of the Neolithic texts researched first of all, and then we'll advance into the next level, and so on and so on. So things like electricity may have to wait for a short while, but that's not a problem. There's still plenty of things to see and do in the Neolithic and Medieval eras on the tech tree, so no real concerns there. As we can see on the map, there's not a lot happening at the moment, so we can allow Cobra to do a good stint of research relatively undisturbed, apart from the odd break for food. And we now have contracted food poisoning, which is unfortunate. That means we're going to be interrupting any tasks on a frequent basis to vomit. We're also going to work a lot slower, and we're going to move a lot slower as well. So, provided we don't have to go out hunting or that sort of thing, we should be okay with this. It will interrupt his research, but as we know, the research progress doesn't get reset when it's interrupted, so that's fine. The other major concern of the food poisoning is our food hunger bar does now decrease a lot faster than it did previously because of the food poisoning. So we may end up burning through our 44 units of human meat here a lot quicker than we ordinarily would. That isn't a major concern however because we can safely head into our cave network nearby and steal these supplies of insect jelly by the hives. Providing all the insects are asleep, which at the moment they are, we can do that relatively safely without triggering the insects to aggro and attack us. If we did that, we'd be in a whole world of trouble at the moment. We do have a bow equipped. However, we're not the most proficient shooter in the world. And taking on those insects with just a recurve bow would be a very, very difficult challenge indeed. Especially if they were all to break out of their hibernation and join the attack. As we can see at the minute, only the mega spiders are the ones that are active during the day. The spellopedes and the mega scarabs are in some sort of stasis stroke hibernation. But if we were to aggro the hive, they may disturb that stasis and come after us. And as I said, that would give us a lot to deal with. What do we have here? A group of bison have wandered onto the map. Let's have a look. So it's just the one bison as far as I can tell. Yes, it is. Let's have a look at this bison here, shall we? So there is only a 10% chance that they will go manhunter when we inflict any sort of harm on the bison. Now, given our food reserves and the fact that the bison does drop a decent amount of food and leather, I think risking a hunting expedition to go and hunt the bison is probably a decent enough idea. So what we'll do, we'll have a bite to eat, and then I think we will draft Cobra, send him up to the northern edge of the map. Let's flag this bison to be hunted. And then hopefully Cobra will have his wits about him here, despite the food poisoning, and safely be able to dispatch this bison. Let's just check 
the movement speed. So they can move at 4.7 cells per second. We're limited to 2.6 because of the food poisoning. So we do have to be rather careful if the bison does turn manhunter. So one successful hit so far. And so far the bison is just fleeing rather than trying to attack us in revenge or retaliation. In terms of damage to the bison, there's one condition that needs tending, and that's a stab to the body. It's done nothing for the movement speed of the bison, however. It's another hit there without retaliation. And that's now hit the front left leg of the bison, so that will slow it down somewhat. Although not enough yet to make it slower than we are. So now we have to deal with a manhunt and bison, so we need to start making a retreat. Luckily we can fire as we move, so we can continue inflicting some hits. Each hit should hopefully slow it down even further. 2.21 cells per second, so I do now believe we can outpace the bison. So we can afford to be a little bit more aggressive here. There we go, that's the bison taken care of. It was a caravan pack animal, so it did have 14 units of silver, but nothing else. So let's get all this hauled back to our little stockpile. We'll prioritise the bison, because that will deteriorate on the ice sheet. The steel will not. Not the steel, the silver will not. Now you may have noticed, during all of that, we had a quest become available. This is forced weather. And they will want to generate a foggy sandstorm for 13 days on the ice sheet. And if we accept this, we can choose between various different rewards for our inconvenience and disruption. Now, I'm quite tempted by this slate double bed. It's masterwork. It has a comfort rating of 1.09. And it also has a rest effectiveness of 112%. Let's just compare that to our current bed. Comfort of 0 0.7, so obviously the masterwork bed is far more comfortable. And it's also more effective at filling up our rest bar. So it might be worth accepting that quest and taking the masterwork bed, because that will mean we don't have to spend nearly as much time sleeping overnight. And we'll also get a nice mood boost. A nice mood boost from the comfort rating when we are in the bed so if i could just remember which of these little icons oh there's a quest one no that's not the quest one at all that's the quest one and a foggy sandstorm i think we can deal with that quite comfortably so we'll accept and we'll accept it for the masterwork bed although these two units of pottery and plant parts do look quite interesting as well no, we'll go for the bed. So we'll accept that. The transport pod carrying the bed will soon land on the ice sheet. We'll get that installed. And as you can see, the weather is now turning to a foggy sandstorm. Here comes the masterwork bed now. Let's prioritise installing this bed in our little base. we will put it just there. And then we can deconstruct this. Well, not deconstruct it, but we'll uninstall it and move it to our stockpile zone. And then we do have a bed ready to go should we attract a second colonist in the near future. So that's the beds now swapped out. We'll set this owner as Cobra. There we go. Let's haul this into our stockpile as well. And the leather. Obviously, before we do that, the first thing we want to do is vomit all over it. Clearly. No, we don't want to pick it up. We want to haul it. I clicked the wrong thing there. There we go. Right, I think it's time for sleep now. And we should now see the rest bar start to fill up a little bit faster than it was previously. In the meantime, I was thinking about doing a little hunting expedition to haul back some of the insect jelly. However... I completely forgot we just butchered up a bison, so we have enough meat for a couple of days, even with the food poisoning. 
So we'll allow Cobra to go and grab the silver that dropped from the bison. Ring that back and then we can decide what our next steps are going to be. There was a comment left on the previous episode about getting some sort of defences set up and in place. I think that's a very good idea. Now obviously any sort of defensive structure and defensive line is going to need quite a lot of steel. So perhaps for the next couple of days we'll have Cobra concentrate his efforts on mining. And then we can get a few walls set up in the various choke points. And we can set some spike traps up as well. And that will give us a nice level of protection from any raids or man-hunting animals that happen to wander onto the map. Now as we can see, there is a way in and out of the map itself through this cave system. And as was pointed out in the same comment, it is possible that a raid party could end up aggroing these insects here in this cave network. And then they could then pursue their that raiding party towards our base. And that could spell a bit of disaster for us. So having some sort of defences on our western flank is definitely something we want to prioritise. And I'm thinking we could wall off this section here, perhaps with an access corridor with a few traps inside. We can wall off along here, and then we'd wall off here and here as well. That way we'd have a decent amount of protection for the time being, and we could expand on that as things progress. In the meantime, however, as we can see, the food poisoning has thankfully abated and we are back into stable health. So we don't have to worry about the constant vomiting. So we'll have a bison meat meal. We shall then do a little bit of hoopstone play just to boost our recreation bar because it was a little bit low. And then I believe we'll send Cobra off to sleep. And then when he wakes up tomorrow, we'll prioritise some mining. We have a nice steel chunk just here. So we can get this mined out, and that should hopefully give us enough steel to get some rudimentary defences set up. And that's going to help our survivability a great deal. So it's the next morning. Cobra's just had a bit of bison meat for his breakfast. A little bit of cleaning, and then Cobra is deciding to do a little bit of research, which is never a bad thing. But as discussed, I think the primary thing you want to get done here is our defences. So what we'll do, we'll just flag this entire vein for mining. By pressing the equals kill, kill, by pressing the equals key, while selecting a single tile of the vein. And then we'll prioritise the mining now. One thing we do have to be mindful of is the temperature. We are comfortable down to negative 42. However, outside it is negative 54. So we'll slowly develop hypothermia as we can see here. It isn't rising alarmingly fast just yet because we have that decent level of protection already. However, we can't spend all day out on the ice sheet at the moment given our current protection levels. So we will have to ensure that we send Cobra back to his little base in good time so he can warm up. And I think what we'll do if we aim Oh, in fact, the temperature has risen a little bit to minus 47, so we are no longer increasing our hypothermic level, as we can see, it's stuck at around 8.5%. So, disregard what I just said, it looks like we can keep Cobra out here for a decent amount of time, and get as much steel mined out as we can, while things are quiet on the ice sheet. Now, there is a potential little abandoned base here which we can see blocked off by this door however there might be a chance that the map generation has connected this little base to this ancient danger here just to the right so while it's tempting to head in there and see if there's any loot that we can secure for ourselves we do want to be careful because if there is some mechanoids inside this ancient danger and there is a connection through here then we could find ourselves in quite a lot of trouble However, we might get lucky and it might be an insect hive in there. And if we were to aggro the insects by tapping into the ancient danger, yes, they would aggro and attack us. However, I believe the current mechanics are they will only pursue you to about 30 cells or 30 tiles away from their base, from their hive, before giving up and returning to protect their hive. So 
We have enough distance there that we should be able to lose the aggro. Of course, however, if it is mechanoids, a scyther or a lancer in here, then we are going to find ourselves in a hell of a lot of trouble because it would be a real impossibility to take down something like that with just a recurve bow and a single colonist. However, we might get lucky here. We could have something useful dropping on the ice sheet. Let's see. Not really, just two heavy clubs. We could go and grab them and sell them to the next caravan that wanders along. However, I'm not sure the return is going to be worth it for the effort. So instead, we'll concentrate on getting all this steel hauled back to our base. As you can see, I've just cancelled some of the mining orders now. I want to prioritise getting this dragged back to base. And then we can get some defence lines set up as discussed. In fact, what I think we will do... After we've had a bite to eat, is start working on our first defensive wall. And I think, first of all, we shall wall off these two sections here. That will be relatively quick and easy to accomplish. Like so. And like so. We will want an access door in each of these. In fact, no, just in the one wall. So that Cobra doesn't have to navigate all the way around these rocky outcrops. In fact, if we didn't put a door in here, then we'd have no access out here. Because there's no way to get through because of this little marble chunk here. So yes, we definitely need the access point. That's the first little section walled off there now. That's the second section. At some point we might want to put a few steel deadfall traps in this area. So if anything does break through, the, protect, uh, the attacks, the attacks, the traps will provide us some level of protection and do some damage to our attackers, either killing them outright or at least weakening them to such a state where Cobra can comfortably finish the job without putting himself into too much danger. The next section we should wall off, I think, is straight along the top here. So let's queue up a construction order for that now. And for now, we'll just go straight across the gap. And we want another one here. We'll want a steel door there. And potentially one there, just to make Cobra's pathfinding a little bit more efficient if he does have to head into this cell top area of the map he won't have to walk all the way around so that's just for efficiency right there okay so he does want to hold some more back to the wall however i think it's more prudent that we go ahead and have something to eat and then head off to sleep perhaps even have a little bit of hoopstone play as well Okay, we'll go to sleep at 90%. There we go. And that's going to give us a nice mood boost. As we can see in our mood tab, we do have a plus 10 for being luxuriantly comfortable in our bed. So that masterwork bed has given us a nice bonus there. We have a flash storm. I think we had one of these in the previous episode. However, as before, because it's on the ice sheet, it's not going to cause us too much danger, so we can just ignore it. Of course, if we were in a tropical setting or a temperate forest, that could be a whole different story indeed. But for us, we're relatively okay with fires, because there's no vegetation out here for the fire to spread to. Okay, so that's the top wall, the northern wall, now complete. We've finished off the last of the bison meat, so tonight we are going to have to go... Oh, we could do it today. So as we can see, the mega spiders have entered hibernation as well. So we should now be safe to run in here and grab the insect jelly at any time, providing they don't wake up from their hibernation if the temperature starts to rise. While it's a negative 56, I think we're going to be safe, so let's get this insect jelly hauled back. Keep a close eye on the mega spider there, because, as I said, if it does wake up now, we're in a bit of trouble. Okay, no problem. 
So that's a decent amount of insect jelly, and that should sustain us for a day or two, but we can always head back through and get some more. There was another decent pile at this little hive here as well. So Cobra is now just going to work on the western side of our defences. As I said, these defences will be modified over time to include deadfall traps and the likes. But for now it just gives us a way to either slow down any raids or keep out any manhunting insects entirely. Not just insects of course, any manhunting animal will struggle with this rudimentary defence. What do we have here? We have a walrus on the map. I think it would be foolish to overlook such a lucrative target, so let's draft Cobra, send him out, and we'll start a hunting expedition towards a walrus. In the meantime, we have another quest, Barry's Bed Bugs. So we could get a new colonist here. She says a pack of three man hunting bed bugs are hunting her. So we could try out our new defences pretty quickly. Uh, Barry is a 71 year old scout, so likely there will be some health issues associated with Barry. I will leave that for a moment. But that could be quite interesting, gaining our second colonist fairly quickly. So we've got a minor break risk here. I guess that might be because of the cold out here. Well, there's quite a few factors affecting our mood at the minute, so we have to be careful because we don't want to suffer a mental break out here. The good thing about the walrus is they will not turn Manhunter even when you attack them. So we can get as close as we like to guarantee or almost guarantee a hit. Of course, this is taking a lot longer than I would like, especially considering our potential mental break situation. However, a bite to eat should help us there, because it has boosted our recreation bar. As we can see, that's now increasing our mood bar, despite the negative 12 from the numbing cold. We've also advanced to minor hypothermia now. So we do need to get back inside ASAP. Obviously, we're on the way. But we do want to make sure we don't develop any sort of frostbite. We've already lost one toad due to frostbite, so... In fact, that no, that wasn't frostbite, was it? Yes, a seal bit it off. I remember, that was in the first episode. I was thinking that was a cracking start, but obviously it's not affected us too severely, as we can tell. Let's get all this hauled into the stockpile and put away nicely. We'll have a good night's sleep. And then we can decide what we want to do about the colonist who is seeking our help. My initial thoughts with regards to Barry, the colonist who requires our aid and attention, are that perhaps we should take on the quest, because if Barry does turn out to be a useless colonist, we can always uh, use them for other means. In the meantime, we've had a Yorkshire Terrier drop on the map, which is going to bleed out in five hours, so that will be a source of food in the not-too-distant future. I'm guessing the Yorkshire Terrier does not provide a lot of meat. No, only 28. And only 17 units of leather, and that is dog leather. Which is not something we have in our stockpile at the moment, so it's not like it would even contribute towards anything else. But we definitely want to haul back these items of clothing down here. Let's prioritise hauling these. Because I do believe they might even provide us a bit extra cold protection over the cloth tukes that we are currently wearing. And they're also both of decent quality and hit points, so they are not tattered. So that's the quest we failed, I believe. Because we attacked and killed at Wayside. So we can get rid of that. That's the active quest at the moment, the Forced Weather. Unfortunately, we were too slow to accept that quest, so we'll get rid of that as well, which is a shame. Maybe I should have just accepted it a little bit faster, but we are where we are, and there's no going back now. I'm sure we'll get other offers in the near future. We have a decent supply of food anyway, so the human meat wasn't critical. And that would have been the primary reason for accepting the quest. 
as we can see, Cobra has equipped the fox skin hat. In terms of protection, it's roughly as it was at negative 43 degrees. What do we have here? A plant cutter named Dorna has arrived and wants to join the colony. Okay, let's accept that. Let's see what Dorna brings to the table, shall we? Let's quickly pause it. So the left-hand side of the skill bar here is relatively low, although four in cooking isn't too bad. It's certainly better than Cobra's. Level 8 in plants, which is largely useless for us out here. However, the level 8 in intellectual is pretty nice. However, as we can see, Cobra has already surpassed that. So let's get Dorna into our base. And I think Dorna will just serve as a meal source for Cobra. And then we can also take the clothing that Dorna has equipped as well. Because some of this might provide us far better cold protection than what we have at present. So we've got the Royal Ascent quest, which I'm sure we all know is a way to get off the ice sheet. However, it's not something we want to concern ourselves with at the moment, because we're in no position to house the High Stellark. Nor would we be in any position to fight off the raids that the High Stellark would attract. So what we'll do, while Dorna slowly freezes us to death, We'll have Cobra haul her clothing over into our stockpile zone. At least I believe Dorna is female. Yes, indeed she is. Rather than cleaning dirt, Cobra, I prefer you did something a bit more useful, such as researching. Dorna has collapsed. They have three package meals and an auto pistol, which is pretty damn good, actually. So let's equip the auto pistol. It's certainly superior to the recurve bow. Okay, so you're still wanting to clean all the dirt out here. Fair enough, I'll let you I'll let you do that if that's what you want to do. So Dorna has now passed away. So we can haul Dorna's corpse into our stockpile zone. Let's see if that's given us a mood boost. Yes, a small plus, plus two mood boost there for my rival Dorna has died. And it's also increased our meat supplies. Now let's just take stock of our leathers, shall we? So we have quite a bit of leather now. So we might be now in a position to craft ourselves some better clothing to better equip ourselves against the elements here on the ice sheet. At the moment, we have a pinniped leather tribal wear and some light leather pelt mantles. We do have some gloves, but we don't have anything on our feet. Let's just go to the crafting spot there. And if we scroll down, we could make some pelt boots for 40 units of leather. So let's queue that up. That's going to give us a little boost to our lowest threshold in terms of temperatures we have a seal on the map just to the western edge so once these boots have been completed i think we'll go and hunt that seal they can and often do turn man hunt so we'll have to be careful with this we don't want to lose another toe so that's the boots equipped so that's increased it from minus 46 to minus 47 which is not the biggest increase in the world, but I suppose every little does help on the ice sheet. So for now, let's go and prioritise hunting this seal. The extra meat and leather is always welcome. We've just been notified of the ancient danger, so we knew it was there anyway, but now it's actually told us. And Cobra gets to try out his new auto pistol for the first time. Much faster rate of fire, which is going to make hunting a lot better. So let's haul the seal back. We have all the steel that we mined out. That's already in our base, so we don't need to worry about that. And we have a fair few stacks of steel. I can count five there. 
So I think what we'll do in the very near future is start setting up some spike traps around the entrances to our base, just to provide us that extra level of protection. For now, we'll send Cobra off to sleep. There's no need to do a scavenging raid tonight. We have plenty of food available now. 39 units of human meat. We have 52 units of pinniped meat as well. And another 75 up there that I didn't see. Okay, what do we have here? Johnny and the Psychic Suppression. So, we could accept Johnny. However, there would be a Psychic Wave hitting the Ice Sheet for 5.8 days, which reduces the consciousness of all the males. I think we'll accept that. We can deal with a reduced consciousness for a few days. And then we'll see what Johnny has to offer. And whether, indeed, he is going to be a long-term addition to our colony or not. Looking at it, I'm going to say probably not. The 10 mining skill is quite nice. However, Cobra does exceed that already. Let's have a look at the gear that Johnny has equipped. The scarf is quite interesting. That would help. He's also wearing a patch leather skirt and some cloth gloves. So, sorry Johnny, unfortunately I don't see much use for you, so if you could kindly drop all your clothing for us. And then make like a good pawn and just stand out on the ice sheet until the cold takes you. We'll allow selection for all of these items of clothing so Cobra can haul them back to the stockpile after breakfast. Okay, so Johnny is now collapsed and is incapacitated, so his end is very near. Let's get all this hauled back. And that's our clothing and meat supplies further improved, as well as our stockpile of leathers. As you can see, Cobra has taken a few of the clothing items. And we are now covered down to negative 62, which is pretty fantastic. That means we can spend as long as we want on the ice sheet now without having to worry about hypothermia. So Johnny has passed away, as we can see here. We have another quest as well, Shack of Goodies. However, any sort of trade caravan trips are off the table for the moment. Instead, we shall butcher Johnny's corpse. As we can see, our stockpile zone is getting a little bit full here. So we might need to expand it in the very near future. What's this? So we could submit ourselves to a low psychic drone for six days in exchange for one of three rewards. Let's see. I think we'll sit on that for a moment. When does it expire? So we've got six days to decide. Likely, whatever we did accept, if we do accept, it would be sold to a passing trade caravan and probably not utilised for our own benefit. But we have a few days with which we can decide what we want to do. In the meantime, now that we have a decent level of cold protection, we can survive without the protection of the steam geyser. I think in the next episode what I'm going to do is start heading into the mountain and get ourselves a little mountain lair set up and then we'll haul everything down into our new base. We'll set up a new stockpile zone inside of the mountain as well. And I think that's all to come in the next episode. For the time being I think we'll end this one here. It's been a relatively slow one, but we've been quite fortunate with the events. Randy Random's desperate for us to have a second colonist. We received two of them, missed out on a third, and both of them have been used to, shall we say, flesh out our supply issues. We have got a snow hare in the northwest corner, which we're going to ignore. That's not critical at the moment. But yes, as I said, I think this is where we'll end this episode. Uh, in the next episode, we will move into the mountainside and carve ourselves a little mountain base, and we'll work on our defensive lines as well. 
But for the time being, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tata for now.